So it is 4.15 a.m. here in Japan on Saturday, uh, November 5th, 2022. And I just recorded this clip fucking excellently, okay? Something happened with my mic and the sound came out like I was like speaking underwater or something, like we're scuba diving. So very fucking annoyed by that. But you know what? Rather than whining about it or rather than just uh, saying, fuck it, I'm not going to make the clip. I have to be OCD and somewhat productive. So rather than prefacing longer than I already have, why don't I just whip through what I just fucking did? So this is a past level diagnosis here, but I made this question more difficult because we're addressing the taxonomy with respect to these viruses, okay? Step one, of course, uh, pass fail, but I'm gonna tell you some high yield points here. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below, and I'll start the clip. So uh, we've got an eight-year-old boy today, history of worsening shortness of breath and exertion. He has a laterally displaced topical impulse. Echo shows diffuse chamber dilation with reduced ejection fraction. No past medical history apart from a head cold two weeks ago. Question wants to know the most likely causal organism is most similar to which of the following viruses. Now, as I said, past level diagnosis here. This is Coxsackie B virus induced dilated cardiomyopathy, DCM. The reduced ejection fraction, systolic dysfunction. Okay, so not hard. The answer were just, what's the diagnosis? Coxsackie B. I mean, this would be a Cuban question where you get like 84% get it right. Okay, if you're watching this clip and you didn't know that, you're like, well, I didn't fucking know it. Okay, well, now you do. All right, so that's past level. And the question's asking, you know, which virus is most similar to Coxsackie B? So we could do a 44 minute discussion of all the microbiology, every little detail, okay? Uh, I've made longer micro presentations here on the YouTube, like 30, 45 minute PowerPoint presentations. If you go through my playlist here, I'm gonna stay consolidated for the point of this YouTube clip though. So let's just whip through, dengue virus, wrong fucking answer. Now, Coxsackie B and dengue, yes, they're both RNA. It's Coxsackie, it's gonna be non-enveloped, dengue's enveloped, but you should just know that dengue's in the Flaviviridae family and it's most similar to West Nile virus, Japanese encephalitis, yellow fever, Zika virus, okay? Dengue can cause a severe retroocular headache, thrombocytopenia, and this is seen in the Yucatan, okay? It's on one of the new NBMEs, actually. They give a question where someone went to the Yucatan uh, and had thrombocytopenia, and the answer is dengue. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, Epstein-Barr virus, wrong answer. This is one of the, this is HHV4 in the herpes viridae. Okay, so viridae means family, so we have many viruses, eight viruses in that family. It's DNA virus, okay, and it's enveloped, double-stranded linear. And I articulate that, although nitpicky, it's asked on the USMLE, okay? So they want you to contrast that with hepatitis B, which is circular, okay? So herpes viridae <clears throat> and hep B, DNA, enveloped, double-stranded. The herpes viridae, linear, hep B, circular, and they do that. They give you a picture of herpes labialis, and you say, well, that's easy. That's that's just HSV 1 or 2. Don't worry about above or below in terms of like oral versus general. Don't worry about it. It's just HSV 1 or 2. And then the answer will just be DNA enveloped linear. So H HSV 1 or 2 for herpes viridae, HHV 3 being VZV, chicken pox, uh, Epstein Barr is HHV 4, CMV HHV 5, Roseola HHV 6. HHV7 is literally just its name, okay? It causes pityriasis rosea, HHV8, Kaposi sarcoma like virus. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, human papillomavirus, wrong answer. Obviously, a lengthy discussion here. It causes condylomata, acuminata, uh, warts, 6 and 11 strains, uh, cervical and penile squamous cell carcinoma, strain 16, 18, etc. okay? So HPV is going to be DNA. It is non-enveloped, double-stranded circular, and is most similar to JC and BK polyoma viruses. A lot we can talk about, JC polyoma can cause uh, pathology in HIV patients classically. Okay, so uh, PML, so progressive multifocal gluconcephalopathy, all right, BK, just uh, renal transplant, non-existent yieldness. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D influenza virus, wrong answer. So whilst influenza and Coxsackie are both 
RNA viruses, uh, influenza is going to be helical nucleocapsid. I'm just going to cut to the fucking chase, okay? A lot of the taxonomy is bullshit. So this is what you need to know. Influenza is simply segmented, okay? You just need to know it's one of the segmented viruses. Rotavirus is also segmented in RNA. But influenza, it's got eight segments, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, two important segments. So if you have point mutations in hemagglutinin or neuraminidase segments, we, that's called antigenic drift. We get, we get epidemics. If we have reassortment of viral segments, then that's called ant antigenic shift causes pandemics. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, poliovirus, correct answer. Okay, so poliovirus is one of the enteroviruses. So poliovirus, Coxsackie A and B, hepatitis A, echovirus, they're all enteroviruses, RNA, and they're non-enveloped, okay? And they're uh, double-stranded, uh, sorry, what the fuck am I saying right now? Uh, Single-stranded positive sense, non-segmented, okay? So RNA, non-enveloped, single-stranded positive sense, non-segmented, and Enteroviruses, okay? Polio, Coxsackie A, Coxsackie B, Echovirus, okay? So you need to know that uh, poliovirus, poliomyelitis, affects the anterior horns. And of course, we vaccinate against it, but it would show up on you as similarly as an elderly patient who has a small leg compared to the other. That's literally how it presents, okay? Because you have muscle wasting from destruction of the anterior horn cells, which is motor, okay? Echovirus, high yield as the most common cause of aseptic meningitis, viral meningitis, okay? So patient has viral meningitis, and you say, well, what's the most common virus uh, associated with it? And you're like, hmm, not sure. It's echovirus, okay? It's one of the enteroviruses. And then hepatitis A, self-explanatory. We're going to have a patient often goes to Mexico, acute hepatitis only, and patient can get jaundice, uh, anore acute anorexia, and fever. And then, uh, of course, Coxsackie A and B. So Coxsackie A is going to be herpingina as well as hand, foot, mouth disease. Herpingina is posterior oropharyngeal vesicles. And Coxsackie B can cause not only dilated cardiomyopathy, but also uh, type 1 diabetes. Some students think that's weird, but there's a 6-amino uh, acid oligopeptide sequence that Coxsackie B produces that bears molecular mimicry with uh, intra-beta islet cell glutamic acid decarboxylase, okay? Uh, and so we develop antibodies against the virus, against the algopeptide, it attacks the GAD65 within the beta islet cell. Coxsackie B also causes pleuridinia, so despite the name, it has nothing to fucking do with the lungs. Uh, it shows up twice on TCK material. There's one on uh, free 120 for TCK, another on Family Medicine Form 2 for the Clinical Mastery Series, where it's lateral sharp chest pain following a viral infection. It's intercostal muscle spasm. You can see increased CK creatine kinase. You know the deal. If you make more content, if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.